If I were to ask you what is inside your aquarium, I bet you'd be willing to give me a list of your fish, your corals, any inverts that you'd put in there. But that's just the things that you can see. What about the stuff you can't see? That's where aquabiomics comes in. Hi there. I'm Hillary for Waterlogged on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. Recently, I was at Reefstock Denver and I saw Aquabiomics at the show. They had a discount and I thought it's a perfect time to do a test on my tank. And stay tuned because they were kind enough to give me a discount code for you guys to use too. So if you decide that you want to do this on your systems, well, I'm going to walk you through it today so that you know what to expect. Now, when you go to their website to purchase your kit, you actually have two different options. You can test and see what bacteria populations are in your tank, but you can also test to see what sort of parasites might be hanging out in your tank as well. That one's called the tank DNA kit, and that is what I decided to go for. So after I filled out all of my information online, they sent me a kit. So it showed up in a package like this. And when you open it, this is what you get. So you get a prepaid shipping envelope and you get the little kit. So up here, this one says M, that's the size gloves that I chose. Let's go ahead and open this up and see what is inside and what we need to do. Oh, okay, right off, it says, just inside the flap steps that we need to take. So step number one is to read the instructions. Okay, first things first, we need to go ahead and wash our hands. I've read the instructions, so I'll walk you through it step by step as I do it myself. I'll be right back after my hands are clean. First step is first, wash my hands. I've already done that. The next thing on the instructions is to go ahead and pull out the pair of gloves and put them on. All right, now that I've got my gloves on, we need to remove the syringe. Using our syringe, I'm going to get a sample of water from the top part of the water column in the tank. Okay, now that I have my water in the syringe, I'm going to take my little filter out of this cup. Now, something that they don't give you in the kit is something to squeeze the water into. So as you are pushing the water through this filter, it's gonna have to go somewhere. So get yourself a container. I've got a cup right here. So we do this slowly, it might take a while, and then we have to do this whole process three times. So as we are pushing the water through the filter that's in this little bottom part, the DNA from the tank is getting trapped in the filter and the water is just going on through. This is syringe number two. I can already feel it's a little bit harder to press the water through than it was the first time. The instructions on this say that you should take your samples um, before you feed, before you do your cleaning. This is syringe number three. Next, we are opening the shipping tube. We're gonna remove the lid, this little blue guy. Set it right here, move this aside and there's a little container of fixative solution that's in the bottom of this tube. So it says to pour the fixative solution into this little cap. All right, now we're gonna use our syringe to pull up the fixative solution. It says if we get some air in there, it's okay. All right, so then we're gonna put our syringe back on top of the filter and we're gonna squeeze that fixative solution through the filter. Now we are going to take the last thing that is in our box, this little sterile bag, and we're going to go ahead and put our sample in it. So you gotta tear that off. We're going to twist this end over end twice, and then press these yellow tabs in. Next thing we have to do is to go register it on their online database and then send it in. Now, timing on this is really important, so it shouldn't, be more than 24 hours from when you take your samples to when you put them in the mail for them to receive. If you have to do your samples early and you can't mail them, go ahead, you can stick them in the freezer and store them until you're ready and able to send them in. Stay tuned because Eli has generously said that he would walk me through my results once they're getting done. I believe it takes about two to three weeks to get them back, so I can't wait to see what's in the tank. 
As I mentioned, I went ahead and sent out my samples to Eli. Now, I mentioned that there is a several week window that you have to wait before you get your results back, and that's kind of where things changed. While I was waiting for my results, I was talking to some people online, and I'll be honest, I was influenced. I decided to go ahead and order a second test to figure out what my microbiome in this tank looks like. I'm genuinely curious, and I think it would be good to have a baseline to know for the future. I would like to be able to run these tests on a regular basis over the years to see how my tank grows and develops in terms of its biodiversity. So that's what I did. Now, thanks to the magic of editing, it's going to be one smooth thing, but it's long, so I'm gonna have to break it up into three different videos. Obviously, you're gonna have this video where I show you what it looks like to take a sample, but then there's going to be the two videos after, where Eli has generously taken his time and sat down with me, and we have gone through the test results from the environmental DNA and the microbiome of my tank step by step. Those videos are going to be coming out in the near future, so I highly encourage you to stick around and make sure that you watch those. Now, the reason I'm encouraging you to watch those is because he gives you so much information, not only about what is in my tank, but most importantly, how to read the results for yourself. When you send a sample into Aquabiomics, you're gonna get a huge amount of information. And so having an idea of how to go through that and how to read and understand that and where you can go to get extra information, I think is really important. So make sure to stick around for those. All right, that is going to conclude this video. Like I said, stay tuned for parts two and three. I would love to be able to share what my tank looks like on a microscopic level with you. All right, this has been Hillary for Waterlogs on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.